In this video, I'm going to talk about adding access points to an extended service set or ESS. If a client is associated with an AP, it can maintain the association as long as it stays within the range of the AP. Consider the cell that we can see in this figure. As long as the client stays within point A and B, three conditions are met. First, the client is able to receive the AP signal at an acceptable level. Second, the AP is able to receive the client signal. And third, one of the acceptable modulation can be successfully used between the client and the AP. As soon as the client goes outside the cell range at point C, as you can see here, one or more of the conditions fail and the client loses the association. In the figure, the AP signal has uh, fallen below an acceptable threshold. Other APs can be added so that the client can move within a larger area. However, the APs must be carefully deployed to allow the client to roam from one AP to another AP. Roaming is the process of moving an association from one AP to the next so that the wireless connection is maintained as the client moves. In this figure, a new AP has been added alongside AP1, each using the same channel. It might seem intuitive to build a larger coverage area by using a single channel. Usually, this turns out to be a bad idea because the client may experience an excessive amount of frame collisions in the area between the two cells. Remember that the signal from an AP does not actually stop at the edge of the cell, rather it continues to propagate as it eventually dies off. This is shown by the signal strength graph of each AP. The client is able to form an association with AP1 at point A. Even at that location, some portion of AP2 signal can be received, albeit at a lower level. Because AP2 is using the same channel as AP1, the two APs and any client within range can essentially interfere with each other through co-channel interference. Ideally, when the client in this figure moves to location B, it should begin to anticipate the uh, need to roam or transfer its association from AP1 to AP2. Notice that AP1 and AP2 are spaced appropriately for roaming, where their cells have some overlap. The two APs are out of range of each other, so they are not aware of each other's transmission on the same channel. Each AP will coordinate the use of the channel with devices that are inside its own cell, okay, but not with the other AP and devices in the other cell. As a result, the client around location B will probably experience so many collisions that it may never be able to roam cleanly. All right, now let me to explain about the clean roaming process. What enables a client to roam in the first place? First, adjacent APs should be configured to use different non-overlapping channels. For example, channel 1 and channel 6. Okay, for example, an AP using channel 1 must not be adjacent to other APs also using channel 1. Instead, a neighboring AP should use channel 6 or higher to avoid any frequency overlap with channel 1 in the 2.4 GHz band. This ensures that client will be able to receive signals from a nearby AP without interference from other APs. As you know, in the 5 GHz band, okay, we have more flexibility. Actually, 5 GHz band is much more flexible in this regard because it has many more non-overlapping channels available. In fact, all channels are spaced such that they will not overlap with each other. The decision to roam is driven by the wireless client driver, not by the AP. Wireless client decide that it is time to roam based on a variety of conditions. The 8.0.11 standard does not address this at all, so roaming algorithms are vendor specific. In addition, the roaming algorithms are usually secret recipes, so that and so the exact threshold and conditions are hidden from view. Some